Greetings from Ogden, Utah. Today is Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. It is 4.40 p.m. Mountain Time. You can see the beautiful sunny skies as it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit here. We're at the corner of Grant Avenue and 21st Street. You can see the temple down there. Historic 25th Street would be that direction. But today we're going to try to take advantage of the nice weather and that beautiful snowy mountains with the sun shining brightly off of them by riding and renting a bike at the Green Bike Station. Ogden expanded, or Green Bike expanded to include Ogden a couple years ago. And if we look at the map here, uh, this is Ogden, where it says number two on there, that's where we're at the station. Everything below that would be heading toward 25th Street. And there's one more station up above uh, where it says there's five bikes available. I'm actually gonna rent one bike here, and then I'm gonna try to exchange it once I get up to that station because there's supposed to be a couple of electric bikes up there. So let me go ahead and get that process started. All right, once you have the particular pass that you want to find the bike, I checked the tires on bike number one here, so I seem good enough. So I'm going to click number one and then unlock bike. And you can hear that little noise. The lock will close in 30 seconds. Okay, so now I have the bike. So let me position my camera now so that I'm in tilt locked mode. That helps keep it straight when I'm riding. I'm gonna try to cross the street here and get to the uh, this side of the street. That way, once I get over there, I'm gonna take the actual bike path. Grant Avenue, the reason I like it in Ogden is because it has right here this dedicated bike path. It goes all the way to at least, uh, I think it goes all the way to 25th Street like this. It's not a super long area, but it, if you're taking trails and want to maneuver to or from the downtown area, it's nice that you have a secure uh, you know, barrier to do this. And I've done a lot of Ogden related videos with bicycles. When I say a lot, I mean probably, I want to say three of them in the past, but I believe they've all been during the summertime. So this is the first time I can recall doing it in winter. So I'll give a little bit of a different perspective. And if anyone's seen those Ogden videos before, it'll be going along the same route. So I guess on Grant, the dedicated protected bike lane does kind of end at 20th Street. So I'm going to dip up onto the sidewalk. But believe me, it does go toward 25th Street if you're headed the other way. And these lights along Grant Avenue change fairly often. So it's not like you have to wait at too many intersections for an extended period of time. Ocalo Drive we're passing now. And with the particular day pass that I chose, you get unlimited 60 minute rides. It used to be 30 minutes, but now it's unlimited 60 minute rides uh, for the day. So that means when I put this bike in over here, it's going to uh, reset the clock, so to speak. So I'm going to get off the bike and throw it in. We'll just put it in slot number six, keep them all, all together. Now let me position the camera downward. 
you're going to want to really ram it in there and make sure you hear. Okay, it looks like it was good. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, if you take your phone out, uh, yeah, I just got a text message saying, green bike J3104 return, thanks for riding. So that's how you know you officially uh, picked the right bike. But now what I want to do, or sorry, that you returned the bike and it accepted it, is I want to look at these bikes you can see that the ones that have a lightning bolt, like number two and number three, are electric bikes. The rest of these are just the standard bikes. So I want to make it electric so that it's easier to pedal. I mean, if you, you could also tell based on the battery packs on the bike. But let's see here, which one do I want to do? Again, I usually feel the tires on them. I know I was in San Francisco getting ready to ride the bikes, and I was alarmed because I'm feeling the tires on them and they all felt the first several ones that we're feeling were all flat this one generally feels fine uh, a little wet on the seat try to dry that off with my hands I like I actually like a very low seat and that may be as low as it low as it goes Okay, so let me go through the process now of unlocking this one. So now I'm picking and again if I look at the app you can see number two, number three, this is number two. So I'm gonna hit number two. You're not currently eligible to check out additional bikes. <laughs> well, let's see here. That's uh, so let's see here. I just exited the app and reopened it. I feel like I've seen that issue in the past before. So let's see if it works this time. Number two, unlock bike. All right, now I hear it. All right, and now we've got ourselves an electric bike. Now let me put my phone away here. Make sure we're in tilt lock mode. So it is good that, you know, sometimes it's good to see those issues happen live because uh, then it may give you an idea if you try it. Like, oh, you know, if that happens with me, Uh, by the way, looks like to start this electric bike, you got a power button here, so let me push that. Looks like the battery is charged good. It has a range of 27 miles still on it. We're going to try to ride the bike going toward this direction. I've done like the full length from Layton, Utah, all the way to uh, the Ogden Trail, which includes this. Hopefully, the video captures some nice scenery along the way. I do need to remember in the future, I have a wide angle lens for my camera that I've never attempted to use before. But I should pilot test it one time, whether it be a walking video. Uh, let's see, I think I do, I think I actually want to go this way to continue the bike trail. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that wide, lang wide angle lens, if it still looks good on video and if it picks up more of a broader reach because even though it looks nice when I do these videos, uh, the focal point of the video is still straight dead on. So as I'm riding this trail going underneath here, I don't know what all this stuff is. It looks like paper. And this is kind of deteriorated. 
weird. It's like it hasn't been quite cleaned up maybe for the during the winter time. Anyway, we got past that part. Remember, I'm used to riding this when I see all the greenery on the trees, so it's different to see it all bare like this. This is the Ogden City River Parkway that is on our right side. Just testing the, the stuff on here. I am uh, shifting gears up to number two on the bike right now. I'm going to have to go back to look at my videos I see if this trail was paved as much as it is like this before. Or it probably was always like this. For some reason it stands out a little bit more. See, you got a little tree that fell here and cut into the path. Sometimes during the winter, this Ogden River gets too high and might actually flood a little bit into these areas. But you can see there's really hasn't been a recent big snowfall that's stayed down. Coming up here on our left is the where the Ogden Pioneer Days are hosted and they do like the big rodeos, the cowboys and all that. And always a fun thing. I won't slow down so much, but uh, let's see if the camera is picking it up. Yeah, you can sort of see it. I'll try to angle. Actually, I can't angle with two hands, but I think if I ride straight, you're still able to capture the artwork that's on the side, left side of this building. It's always great to see this and let me snap a picture like right here this gives you a nice perspective of the bike trail the river and the artwork all in one sitting when I've taken this trail in the past it, it is very there's quite a few people that take it it's not like you're isolated now uh, recently I did a when I was in Las Vegas, I did a bike riding video down the Western Beltway Trail, and I felt like the only person on the trail the whole time, although it was Super Bowl Sunday, so that may have played a role too. But yeah, I love seeing that art artwork that's there on the left side. Now, when you if you go over your 60-minute limit without returning the bike, it's they charge you five dollars per hour for every 
additional hour that you have it out. Fun fact about this swimming pool up here on the left side, that is from the movie The Sandlot, if you are a fan of that movie. And you remember the swimming pool scene. That's the filming location they used for that. Now this is where the path gets a little bit, if you're not familiar with it, maybe confusing. This looks new, this, uh, this colored artwork. I wonder if that's in part to help tell people where to go for the trail. I think it is actually, so that's a nice touch because in the past I had to keep referencing Google Maps like, oh, where do I go for this trail to continue? And now you can see you just follow the colored stripe on the ground. And it's not that long of a detour. And it's, again, not, it's not like there's a ton of traffic. All you do is pick the route back up right here. It does say on the ground 10 miles per hour, so they want to try to limit how fast you're going. Because they, especially when you've got the blind tunnel here, this is another good spot to take a picture. Look at that. <laughs> Entering a tunnel on the bike trail when you've got those mountains up top in the sky. We're getting some great, great pictures here. But yeah, you don't want to be blowing down here at 15, 20 miles per hour. A, it could be too fast and you hit a sharp uh, you know, spin out or something, but you also don't want to collide with someone. Up here on our right side is a small botanical garden area, free for the public to look around in. And it, like I said, it is pretty small. I believe it's, I feel like it's related to uh, one of the universities nearby that help operate it, but the Ogden Botanical Gardens. I did tour that once before in one of my videos. Nice to see some people out on this sunny weather day. It's funny how much quicker or easier it is to go with an electric bike. Anytime I've ridden this in the past, it's with uh, my personal bike non-electric. Got even more people down here. During the summertime you'll see people like with their boats in the river. I've even seen people with a little boat in the river and their dog inside the boat. memory serves me correct, the next point that we're going to hit on this trail is kind of like a big green open field where they have a bunch of exercise training activities you can do.
I think it's going to be right after this hill. Yep. So you got the big green open field and then, as I was saying, all the exercise related things. Goal, the goal fitness trail. So this circles around. You can see one couple has their dog enjoying the big field. And then that shot of the mountains. They've got some spots where you can have a little picnic table, do a little barbecue. And there is a parking lot over here too. So you can actually drive into this area. With the riding, the hands are getting a bit cold, so I'm going to briefly pause right here and make sure I throw on my gloves. All right, got the gloves on now. feels much better. One of those things where, you know, walking, you could tolerate it without gloves. It'd be nice and pleasant, but that constant wind, you start feeling it. So then the, after this little side trail, you just cross this road here, look both ways, and then continue on the trail. This part's going to dip and then go right back up. It is a tad bumpy, but not not too bad in some spots. And then the next part that we're going to hit here, yeah, this, some of this is a little bit excessively bumpy, but But even though you can't quite see it, through the fence on the right side is the Ogden, I think it's called the Eccles Dinosaur Park. And again, the camera's not gonna quite pick it up, but visibly I can, you can actually see some of the dinosaurs. Let me brief, briefly pan to the right side. Now this is one of the things where Sometimes because of the trees during the summer, even though you're right next to it, you, know, you can't necessarily see through. So I can see more of the park than you normally would. I'm not sure if they're open during the winter or during like this time of the day, because right now I don't see any customers or patrons in the park. But like I said, I have been there once, captured some of that on a previous Ogden video. It's fun to check out and see all the sculptures and just relax as you go through it. I'll try ringing the bell here a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like you got a dog here following its owner. <laughs> For those of you who've seen Coco before in my videos, the dog, there's no way Coco would be so obedient. It would be, it's, she's so excited, she would run up to every person and jump up on them in a totally playful manner but still that's not something I 
you know, some people are like, oh yeah, sure, they'll let their dog do that. I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm still terrified that she's gonna, in her happiness, uh, accidentally hurt hurt someone. But it'd be cool if the dog was trained like that. So the mountain part that's closest to us up ahead isn't snow covered, but if we look toward the right, it is. By the way, this place on the right side here is called Timberman Steaks and Seafood. I was actually there once. My partner, uh, not this year, but the previous year, so that I guess that would have been 2022, for the for her company Christmas party. They held it there. So there's a little trail connector to the left here, the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. I don't know if that's what that is, but we'll hit that a little bit in a second. This archway sign is for the dinosaur park, whether you're exiting or entering. But first, let's make sure no one's coming in here. Okay. So that car was nice to let me go. Over on the left, Mormon muffins and some other exhibit, but let's take the bicycle over here to this parking lot. There's a rainbow trail over there and I believe another one that's toward the left side here. It's actually not as picturesque as I was hoping for at this time of year, but let me sort of pan and give you a perspective. So we're, I guess, I think we're so close up that we're not seeing the depth of where the snow is. Like you see the mountain back there, you've got the snow on it or the snow up there. And then also like in the distance, if you keep on going further into the, the snow, you see the mountain, mountains covered with snows and trees, but all these ones up close don't quite have that effect on them until you get to the peak. So let me snap a picture here and then I'm gonna go back to that small uh, connector trail where that little bridge was a second ago. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a comment with your thoughts on seeing the winter scenery in the Ogden area. Now we're going to try to go back to that. spot we were just at. Oh yeah, it was. that's what I was going to mention. The Ogden bus 674 does come this way. I think there's a bus that actually goes into that parking lot area too. We'll wait a second for traffic to clear here. So 
So this is what I was referring to earlier. We're going to take a slight, slight detour and go toward the right side now. Over this bridge. And this is going to loop us down underneath a tunnel where we're going to come out on the other side. See, you got a big puddle there. Make sure the conditions are okay here. In these tunnels, you do have, when it's wet, some water dripping from the, the top part. Not too much. Uh, greeted by a little bit of a nice mural. Probably get a better shot of it if you're coming in the other direction. Now there is an end point, at least when I rode this once before in the past, a couple of years ago, it's going to end pretty soon, but the cool thing is it still gets you kind of into these mountains. I'm trying to think, when did I drive it? I drove this when I was going somewhere. I can't remember if that was when I was going to Huntsville or somewhere else. That sign there does say bicycles share the road. And then at least at this beginning portion, I could see there's sort of a curb lane. Now you look at these rocks that are on the ground. This is from rocks that have actively fallen you can see here the sign says bike path ends 200 feet ahead yep bike path ends yeah i don't want to i was going to go further and i was like yeah there's too many rocks there so yep that's where the bike path ends uh fortunately if i turn around right now you're going to be blinded by the sun but what i'm going to do is i'm going to ride a little bit and stop and turn around and show you the rocks when the sun is not blinding you so bear with the footage for about 30 seconds here Maybe more like 45 seconds. Okay, I think this is good enough. I'll turn around now. Alright, so now I've changed the camera mode so I can show going upward. I see that all the time. But I'm not quite sure what what that is for. Like in my head, it looks like, oh, it looks like it could be a bridge someone can cross. But I don't think people are like crossing that. But I'd be curious to know what its purpose is. But yeah, it's interesting to drive through here. But this is as far as the bike trail goes. So if anyone ever sees that path and is like, oh, I wonder where it goes. Just be aware that you are limited to... Uh, this depth is as far as it goes. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retrace everything I just rode back to the starting point. So I'm not gonna film that. And then this might be kind of like the end of the video. I'll have to see the timing, but uh, I'll definitely do a sign off officially before I decide that or whether I continue a little bit going the opposite direction from where I started. We didn't see it earlier because we were coming the other way, but the Ogden Arch, when you're wel being welcomed to Ogden, is right over there. So I returned the bike in under an hour. I think it was like 45 or 50 minutes. Uh, again, this is where I first took out the electric bike, and I went that way when I shot the video that you guys just finished watching. The Ogden River Parkway Trail does continue over there where you see that post. But 
I think, you know, going that direction, the issue is that the sun, which is right there, is going to be like right in your face. And even when I was riding on the way back, a lot of times when I was riding, I was blind because there's a big sunball in my eyes. So, you know, I had to make sure I was not running into people who are on the path coming the, coming the other way. Also, if I do go that way, even though it's a nice trail, I don't have a distinct, like, stopping point for where I would go because it's just a trail that keeps on going and going and going and, you know, eventually joins up with another trail, but that take me too far out of the way. Uh, at least, you know, that's why I went the way I did because there's a stopping point by the mountains and some scenic stuff along the way, like the murals and dinosaur park, botanical gardens, etc. But hopefully that was a fun little ride for you guys. And again, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you next time signing off from ogden utah